In this video, we will talk about how to evaluate limits graphically. So I want to begin with an example. And first, just give yourself about two minutes or so to copy this graph down. I already paused the video if you need to for about two minutes to copy this down. And then what we want to do is evaluate the following. So part A says, well, what is f of negative 3? So if I look at my graph where the x value is negative 3, where's the point on the graph? The point is all the way up here. So f of negative 3 is asking, well, what is the output? What is the y value when x is negative 3? And the output is 5. So that is my answer. Part B is now asking for a limit. Well, what is the limit as x approaches negative 3 of f of x? So recall that this notation, this limit notation, means that x gets close, gets closer and closer to negative 3, but not equal to negative 3. So we don't actually care what's happening exactly at negative 3, but not equal to it. Okay, so if I look at my graph, as x gets super, super close to negative, negative 3, that is sort of this part of the graph, this part of the graph getting super, super close to negative 3, and it's also this part of the graph from the other side getting super, super close to where x is negative 3, but I don't care what's happening right at negative 3. So if I think about those two parts of the graph getting super, super close to where x is negative 3, the outputs f of x, the y values, are getting really close to 1. So this limit equals 1. All right, so the reason again is for this, why is it 1? It's because as x gets close to negative 3 from either side, from either side, the y values, which is f of x, the y values are approaching 1. So I'd really encourage you to, to pause the video and, and think about that for about a minute or so if you're unclear about why it's 1. We're going to do several examples to get more comfortable with this idea. All right, so part C, let me zoom it out a little bit so I can see it, is the limit as x approaches 1 of my function. So for this one, I'm going to ask you to pause the video for 30 seconds to try it on your own first. 4, 3, 2, 1, pause it and try this one in your own. What's the limit as x approaches 1? Alrighty, so hopefully you tried this one. This limit does not exist. I, I will write D and E. This one does not exist. And the reason is, as x approaches 1, f of x, my y values, f of x approaches 2 values. Because as I get close to 1 from the left, as I, get, as I get close to 1 from the left, the outputs seem to be getting really, really close to 4. And as I get close to 1 from the right-hand side, the outputs get close to wherever this hole is, and that y value is 2. So the y values are getting close to 2 numbers, not 1. So the limit does not exist. All right, so we are ready for a definition about what a one-sided limit is. So there's two different definitions here, very closely, uh, they're very similar to each other. So the first says that the limit as, and underneath it, I'm going to write x, approaches some number a, and in the exponent, I'm going to write a plus sign. x approaches a with a little plus sign. The way I interpret this is, this is the limit of f of x. So what are the y values getting close to? As x approaches, as my x values approach a from the right. So the plus sign means that I'm going to be approaching my number from the right, which means x is going to be bigger than a. So that would be like in my picture, you know, approaching 1 from this side. This is the right-hand side of 1. Okay, so I can also talk about the limit from the left. The way I notate that is I would write limit as x approaches a, and I would put a minus sign of the exponent. And in words, that is the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left. And if I'm on the left-hand side of a, that means that x is less than a. So let's do some examples. 
Part D asks, well, what's the limit of my function as x approaches 1 from, with the little plus sign, that means from the right. So this means from the right. So let's go to the graph, and let's approach 1 from the right-hand side. So here is where 1 is. From the right-hand side of 1, we are going over here, getting super, super close to this hole. And the y values are getting close to 2, because that's the y value of the hole. So that limit is 2. And again, with a limit, we don't care what's happening exactly at that number, exactly at 1. The point is up here, where the y value is 4, but we don't care what's happening exactly at that number, just really, really close to it. And if I'm on the right-hand side of 1, getting really, really close to, to 1, I'm getting close to this hole, where the output is 2. All right, now let's do the limit from the other side, part E. The limit as x approaches 1 with a little minus sign, that means from the left. So if I look at my graph, if I'm approaching 1 from the left, that is this part of the graph, getting closer and closer to 1 from the left-hand side. And there my y values are getting super, super close to 4. So that is my limit. It is going to be 4. All right, so now we can state an important fact about these one-sided limits. And it's that when I talk about kind of an overall limit, as just as x approaches a, for that limit to exist, that only happens if and only if. One of the things that we need is the limit as x approaches a from the left, so I write with the minus sign of my function, better be the same as the limit as x approaches a from the right with the little plus sign of my function. If they weren't the same, we'd have situations like where they were, it was approaching two different numbers, like I had in part c. Okay, and the other thing that I need is both of the one-sided limits, both these one-sided limits, need to be finite. For the limit to exist, the value needs to be finite. All right, so the next part of this example is f, which asks, well, what's the limit as x approaches 3 from the left? Okay, so as I'm approaching 3 from the left, so x is 3 is where this vertical asymptote is. So if I'm approaching 3 from the left, I am kind of going here along the function. And my function values, the outputs, these y values are getting super, super small. They're going to negative infinity. So I would write negative infinity. So one important thing that I want to mention about this is remember that although infinity and negative infinity, they're not finite numbers. They're just sort of concepts. These technically, remember, they fall into the D and E category. This actually, this limit technically is a does not exist limit because it's not a finite number. But remember, although they fall into that D and E category, if, if we get a limit and the limit is infinity or negative infinity, so if I can be a little bit more specific like that, then we must be specific. We must specify that. Let me put that in a different color. We must, we must specify that. So if my limit is infinity or if it is negative infinity, I shouldn't just write D and E because it's not specific enough. I, I should indicate oh, if it is infinity or if it is negative infinity. So now let's do part G. What is the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of my function? As I'm approaching 3 from the right, that is this part of the graph. The y values get infinitely large there. So this is going to be positive infinity, or I can just write infinity. Okay, so this comment is applying to both of these situations. And now, okay, so with that in mind, we can do h pretty quickly. What is the overall limit as x approaches 3 of my function? Well, the limits from the left and the right are different, so this is definitely d and e. It does not exist. Based off of the two previous parts, they were different. Okay, let's move on to i. The limit as x approaches 5 of my function. So this is an overall limit, or a two-sided limit. 
Okay, so we need to be approaching 5 from both sides, from the left and from the right. And from both sides, the function is sort of dropping the negative infinity. Okay, so I'm going to write that this equals a negative infinity. Technically, that does fall into the D and E category because it's not finite. But because I can, because it is approaching negative infinity, I, I need to be specific about that. So this comment also applies here. Alrighty, so I'm going to end this video by, by previewing infinite limits a little bit, which we'll see again in section 2.6. But we can handle these right now, actually, by looking at this graph. Part J asks, what's the limit as x approaches infinity of our function? So when I write x is approaching infinity, this means as x gets infinitely large, x is going to get infinitely large. So if I look at that part of the graph where x gets really, really big, that is way over here as x gets really, really big. And my function is sort of approaching this horizontal asymptote. The outputs are getting super, super close to 3. So that's what this limit is. So now, finally, for part k and l, I want to give you one minute to try these. So 4, 3, 2, 1. Pause that video and try these for about a minute. Alrighty, so hopefully you did that and let's talk about them together. So first, what's the limit as x approaches negative infinity of my function? So the x values are going in the negative infinity direction. That is sort of way over here to the left part of the graph. So that is going to be this end of the graph. And the outputs or the y values are going to negative infinity. And then finally, part L, this is not an infinite limit at all, actually. What's the limit as x approaches negative 4? So this is not a one-sided limit. It's kind of what I call a two-sided limit or an overall limit. As the x values get super, super close to negative 4, as right here, the y values or the outputs are getting close to 0. So that is what this last limit is. So we have kind of tackled our goals for this section holistically over all of these videos. Remember, we focused on how to evaluate limits graphically. We did it numerically a little bit in the last section using a table of values. We're going to talk about how to do them algebraically in the next section. And we've also talked about how to tell when a limit does exist and when a limit does not exist.